As Americans are still waiting for the results in some congressional races across the country, hundreds of thousands of Brazilians are still protesting their election results. Brazilians protested outside a regional military facility in Rio de Janeiro this week. Protesters defied a November 11th Supreme Court order to free up roads and public spaces. Similar protests are taking place in Brasilia, São Paulo, Belo Horizonte, and smaller cities, too. The protesters claim that former President Luiz Ignacio Lula da Silva, who goes by Lula, stole the election in Brazil. The protesters are backing Brazil's current president, Jair Bolsonaro. Bolsonaro has repeatedly questioned the reliability, reliability of electronic voting machines. Lula's victory was only by a slim margin of 0.9%. Lula and his political allies strongly influence, or some would say control, the intense media coverage in Brazil. Judges are even sending journalists to jail. Paula Schmidt is a Brazilian journalist who's speaking out against the corruption. She claims the Brazilian Supreme Court, Big Tech, and others teamed up to rig this election. I can guarantee that I have never witnessed, without exaggeration, so much censorship and fear of injustice. I have lived in 13 countries, a few of them dictatorships or monarchies. And I have never witnessed such a fast and progressive erosion of democracy and so many attacks on freedom. This is all happening in my country, Brazil. One Brazilian newspaper even reported that a team of journalists had to be escorted, escorted out of the crowd by the military. Let's welcome in journalist Matthew Tiramon. Matthew, the last time we talked, there... It, it, the military audit had not happened yet, and you had said that there was a high level of confidence for the military and this audit. Catch us up to speed as to what happened with that and where Brazil stands now. Sure. So we spoke right before our midterms, and the military audit had begun after the first round, October 2nd, and they held it until the second round so they could pick up more data, which was on October 30th, which is when we saw all these voting irregularities and tabulations that made no sense, and Lula somehow managed to uh, eke out a victory uh, with some very, very out-of-whack uh, statistical anomalies. And the military audit was released right after our midterms. They did not want to jump the shark on the international press. Uh, and what they released was something that simply said in 65 pages, uh, we believe that there are certain things that we cannot audit that look potentially fraudulent. They did not come out and say this is outright fraud for the simple reason that the electoral court blocked them from actually doing an audit. They blocked them from access to the machines. They blocked them from certain uh, tranches of data. And they said this in their audit that the TSC, it's the subsidiary court to the Supreme Court, and not coincidentally, it is chaired. It was led by the same figure, Alexander de Moraes, who is public enemy number one for the liberals of both the left and the right in Brazil. Uh, this is a guy who is acting as if he was a judicial tyrant who by legislative uh, or uh, judicial fiat and diktat is putting journalists in prison, uh, is uh, cr changing laws, even though the court does not have the statutory right to do so. And the Brazilian constitution, which they're supposed to be the arbiters of, uh, says specifically that when there's a separation of powers dispute, as is developing now between the judiciary and the executive branch, and even with those in the le legislative branch, when you've got congressmen censored and some have been arrested by this man, uh, it's up to the military to adjudicate this dispute. It's also the competence of the military, according to the Brazilian Constitution, to overview an election if there is allegation of fraud and impropriety. Meanwhile, the TSC, the Supreme Electoral Court, has blocked out the military from doing the audit. And then today, this is breaking today, uh, this court, uh, just coming on the heels of the eight members of the Supreme Court being in New York, which we'll discuss in a second, uh, they're suggesting that they need to go and arrest and detain the head of the defense ministry, because they know that the military stands with the people. The people are protesting outside military barracks for a reason. Uh, and the military would be the force that would come and adjudicate this by force if necessary uh, and potentially arrest these judges and declare martial law. Hey, this is Latin America. And there has been uh, military engagement in government since the 60s and 70s. Uh, and Brazil has been free of military rule 
but given the military constitutional rights in case other tyrannies pop up within the executive branch, within the legislative branch, or within the judicial branch. So things are getting very, very heated. On November 15th, which was two days ago, millions of people took the streets. You showed some footage. We're talking Brasilia, obviously the capital, the two biggest cities, Rio and Sao Paulo, but cities as, as far afield as Recife in the north, which historically was a leftist stronghold, which is where you'd expect Lula to do really well, while people there feel disenfranchised because some of the tabulations in, uh, in provincial districts uh, and uh, electoral uh, administrative zones have shown that there were zero votes for Bolsonaro. And there are thousands of videos floating around the Internet of people from those uh, jurisdictions saying, no, no, I voted for, for Bolsonaro. So people are feeling widely disenfranchised. They're taking to the streets. And I actually think this will end off with some sort of martial law and the military coming in and enforcing action against this out of control court. You know, it, it's you could almost interchange the United States and just switch out Brazil and thinking about the 2020 election, right? It, it's kind of surreal. And what was also amazing to me is that I, I was trying to keep up with it, you know, while we were still so deep in covering the midterms and we still are. But American outlets reported it as, as if the military just didn't find any fraud, that they said there was no fraud, this is a legit election, when what they actually said and what they had access to was completely different. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's funny how, you know, the, the media covered it when Joe Biden gave a comment right after the, the election tabulation and all of its uh, uh, non-confidence uh, or confidence lacking from the people. And he said, congrats to Brazil for fair and free and credible elections. How could you possibly know that moments after you have a tabulation? Uh, yeah. So it's, you know, me thinks the lady doth protest too much. It's very, very, uh, it smells fishy on every level. It feels like the fix is in with the global media. They're not even reporting millions of people. This is the largest street manifestations I think that I could report on that I've ever seen historically since the fall of communism, since the 80s in, in Europe in the late 80s and early 90s. There's mm -hmm. never been manifestations anywhere in the world of this scale. We're talking not millions, but we're approaching now eight figures, tens of millions across a country of 210, 220 million people. So it's really massive. And it's not only in Brazil. You had the eight Supreme Court justices who were appointed by Lula himself, who let him out of prison and annulled his conviction. He's convicted three times in three separate courts, and they annulled it. And they to get him on the electoral battlefield so they can put this fix in. And they went to New York to speak about how they saved democracy with, get this, the incoming Lula cabinet ministers. And this was scheduled months ago at the Harvard Club on West 44th Street in Manhattan. So to get the space, they had to wow. reserve it months ago, a forum about Brazilian democracy. And you had the eight Supreme Court justices appointed by Lula in New York talking about how they saved Brazilian democracy. And guess what? People protested. People came out to 44th Street. The exiled journalists in the U.S. who've been censored. Yeah. Uh, Alan Dos Santos, who has an Interpol red notice uh, levied against him by Moraes, and Interpol's declined to, uh, to prosecute it and to execute it. He came out and led with a bullhorn. And these guys had to have very, very deep security, these justices, to get in and out of the car. Everybody, thousands of people were yelling at them, that calling them, you know, curses and saying, you have destroyed our democracy. And even today, I saw a clip of a woman in Lula's camp that through the Sao Paulo form who said, we have to save Brazilian democracy just like we have to save Maduro's Venezuelan democracy. This is the way Lula, the Sao Paulo form, these communists think it is truly a mental disorder. And they have do, they believe the ends justify the means to take over Brazilian democracy the way they yeah. have in well, and sadly now in, in uh, Colombia and Chile as well, Sao Paulo Forum, uh, uh, people now run those countries. It's so sad to see, and Brazil is a lovely country. We will see if the, the voice of the people prevails and, and keep an eye on this going forward. Thank you so much, Matthew Termon. Such a detailed picture of what we're not getting to hear much of in America. Thank you. My pleasure.